All right, let's go ahead and jump in because there's a lot to unpack here. So let's get started with the video. Hey guys, this is Ashley. Welcome on back to my channel. So today we're talking about the Pat McGrath Star Wars collection, and this is actually their second time teaming up for a collab. But let me go ahead and introduce myself. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you're older but goody, welcome on back. My name is Ashley. I have a doctor in pharmacy and I love makeup. So that's how you get Dr. Ash and her makeup, but please just call me Ash or Ashley. Now, Pat McGrath is my favorite brand. Mm. Yes, yeah, she's my favorite brand, but I'm concerned. Not quite sure what's going on with my favorite brand right now, but it's my favorite brand, okay? So she released a collection with Star Wars, and this actually came out on December 16th, okay? So I picked up a few goodies, and I'm going to go into the prices and all that stuff when I do the swatches because I picked up four items, four items, yeah. So I have a couple of palettes here for you. So I picked up the Divine Joy palette and I also picked up the five pan, which is Sith Seduction. And then I also picked up two of, what are these called? The Chroma Lux Artistry Pigments. And I got two shades, which was the Galactic Gold or Extra Galactic Gold, excuse me. And then we got Rouge Rebellion. So I'm gonna swatch each one of these on my eye and talk about the finish and the price points. And then I'm also gonna take the time to swatch each one of the palettes and do an eye look with each one. And of course, at the end, talk about some final thoughts. Now, I know a lot of people were confused probably when she came out with the Star Wars, you know, collection and it's so close to Christmas, but actually it feels pretty normal, okay? But there's some other things that we need to kind of dig into about why it feels off, okay? So originally the first Star Wars collection came out really like the second week of December. And I want to say that was back in 20... When did the original Star Wars collection come out? I have it on my computer. One second. All right, so I figured it out. The Pat McGrath first uh, release with Star Wars, or the first collaboration, actually released in December of 2019. So it actually came out. And 2019 was a very full year for Pat McGrath Labs because I had to write all this down. This is my iPad right here, but I just keep a little pages of how things came out. And most of them were off of memory, but it started to become too much to remember because I have so much and there's so many releases and the other ones I just verify by using like her, her website and Tintalia because Tintalia would post, you know, when things would come out. So 2019, like I said, was very, very full. So by the time we got to the beginning of 2020, we were like, whoa, you don't have to come out with anything else until May. But 2019, the rundown was we got Mothership 6, which was Midnight Sun. And then we also got unbeknownst to us, Mothership 7, which was Divine Rose, like two months later. And it actually released in the UK first. And the people in America, we were like scrambling to get our hands on it. So then a month later, she had a release here in the United States. Then for holiday 2019, which was probably like really end of October, November, actually pretty late versus when she releases her holiday now, we got three quads. We got Iconic Illumination, Nocturnal Nirvana, and Ritualistic Rose, okay? At first, Ritualistic Rose just kind of like wasn't there, but then it popped up. Then in December, right before Christmas, we actually got the Star Wars release, and it consisted of three things. Now, this was a whole collection just like how this was. It had lip glosses and highlighter bombs and yeah, it was a lot. But the main things I'm going to focus on, we had the re-release of Mothership 4, which is Decadence. We had Mothership Galactic Gold, which is actually the small baby mothership, which is, let's see, right here. And then we also had Dark Galaxy. So these right here. Now, the launch with these were crazy, okay? So, you know, everybody's super excited. Everybody's like on the Pat McGrath train at the moment. And we had the re-release of Decadence. Now, Decadence was not available at the time when that palette was released. So it felt okay because people really been asking for Decadence to come back. People really weren't on Pat McGrath's brand like that when Decadence came out. I felt like people really weren't on it until about Mothership 5. This is my Mothership 5 t-shirt. So this is Decadence. So when it released, it was just like it was cool because it wasn't out, you know? And people could just get it with the special packaging problem with the whole collection those little star wars fans they bought that junk up so quick blink people who usually get pat McGrath couldn't even get their hands on it it was a lot to get your hands on it okay then i want to say 
it's either this palette or this palette where it's one of them you can purchase it the day before on an Instagram you can purchase it through Instagram and then the next day you can get both of the palettes or you can get single palettes on her website so it was just confusing I think I got one of the palettes through the Instagram app because I had to have this collection the colors were gorgeous they were beautiful so this is the original and this is how she, you know she used to do her six pants I hope that she still continues with this. this was the first time we didn't have like the little envelope opening but this one right here is galactic gold and this this did have some repromoted shades and they're not too bad but they were things that really were not available and then we had dark galaxy so this is dark galaxy right here and this is what it looks like oh and then once again you did see these shades actually from these two six pants reappear when she did her first mothership mega for holiday 2021 which was or actually excuse me holiday 2020 which was the celestial so you did see the shades reappear in this particular palette which is the mothership mega celestial divinity my goodness there's so many so as you can see on the ends those were the star wars shades and in the middle was two six pants now this particular collection it just felt i don't know it was just like this would have been wonderful but i feel like we've been thrown for such a loop when it comes to pat mcgrath lately we don't know what's going on things just don't feel as authentic they don't feel as luxe as they once did and then just to add insult to injury she repromotes mothership six we're like why why are you repromoting Mothership 6? Mothership 6 was a palette where I guess people really weren't feeling Mothership 6 when Mothership 6 came out. I was feeling Mothership 6 from out the gate, okay? I've always loved Mothership 6. But then, you know, it started becoming deeply discounted. It was $70. You would see it for $80 at Sephora and on her website. But really at Sephora, I don't know if they just had so much. But that particular one Mothership would just always be on sale. Now... It was just like that wasn't for me so it was no way that i was going to actually repurchase this palette this is mothership six this is the original one once it came out and it's a very gorgeous palette i do like it but a lot of people started falling in love with it you know once the palette you know came on sale and people could get it at a way better price point so i always thought the palette was gorgeous so Saw the packaging instantly. Like I said, Mothership 4 was repackaged, repromoted, but what was different about it, like it had a gold packaging and it said Star Wars here that was actually embossed in this packaging, kind of like how she did Mothership 7 and Mothership 8 when it came out. This is my Mothership 8. You see how it's rose gold. Now, like the packaging on there, it would have been so cool, but it was not flush to the packaging. And come to find out when our friend Monica over here did her reel, she was like, Ashley, it's a sticker. She told all of them, we were like, what? And she literally was able to just pull it off. Then about the batch codes, it seems like some of the palettes are old. I don't know what's going on. The packaging on here, it doesn't feel that great, but I'll talk about it later. So I don't know what's going on. I love Mothership. I, I do like some of the products that I picked up. I do, and I'll talk about it there. I'm not here to bash the brand, but I'm just giving the information as it is and how I see it. So, you know, people are like, oh, it's the end of the year. It feels cash grab. It, it, it feels somewhat cash grab, but it doesn't. Because if you know the history, you know that the Star Wars has always come out after. And I decided, I was like, I'm just going to pick up what I want to pick up and what I like and what appeals to me. Because it was actually three palettes and then there were some lip glosses and they're all were promoted. And we've kind of gotten used to that when it comes to Pat McGrath anyway. But... I said, I don't know if these Star Wars people are going to go crazy like they did the last time. And you couldn't buy anything. I just checked on the website. Everything's available. I'm not sure how, but I remember the lag time and the lead up for the last Star Wars collection was very long. So maybe the word was just out there and the people were like, yes, we're going to get this stuff. And versus this time, it's like, uh, it is what it is. So I just have no clue where this is going. But I have a, I have two beautiful looks with for you look i have two beautiful looks for you today can't get the words out one using sif seduction yes because you know i'll make up a name and she got some names and this is divine droid so i have divine droid on at the moment i'm going to show some comparisons i'm also going to do eye swatches of my two uh chromalux pigments 
Did I just make that name up? Nope. Yep. Promolux Pigments. So like I said, I have Rouge Rebellion and Extra Galactic Gold. And then we're going to wrap up with some final thoughts and I'm swatching everything there. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first demo I'm going to jump into are actually going to be these uh, Chromalux Artistry Pigments, probably because they're like the easiest to remove. And I have worn one of them before. So I've actually worn the Extra Galactic Gold. I wore it on Christmas. And if I can remember, I'll like insert a picture. And it was actually really pretty and it didn't have any issue applying so according to let's see the Pat McGrath website open my iPad back up so these were $32 it's supposed to be a luminous pigment rich color foiled metallic finish it's also supposed to be glide on easy a creamy texture it does glide on very easily and has a creamy texture and you can use this actually for the eyes and the lips brush or fingertip application so I did find that you can use your finger you can use a brush the brush that I recommend for this is actually if you have it in your collection the refer 02 or something close like it let's focus come on so the refer <laughs> zero two I think it's yeah it's more focused back here actually so the refer zero two and it's because it's just really dense and it's able to pack on shadows I also find that this brush works really well with the multichromes so my eyelids are primed um, <laughs> if you haven't seen that video where I had to dump my holy grail of the Urban Decay primer potion in the shade caffeine yeah because she has not been in stock in quite some time and I basically ran I have like a very little bit left in my um, tube and when it gets down to the end it just doesn't lay very well it kind of it gets it looks starts looking textured so this is the paint pot by Mac and this is contemplative state it's a pro longwear paint pot and this is what it looks like and as you can see it's exactly my color which makes it really nice so my both of my eyelids are primed with that so right now I'm just gonna go ahead with the reference zero two I'm gonna start off with extra galactic gold so as far as this the packaging and the packaging that this comes in I'm actually I'm, I'm okay with it like I don't have a problem with it so I'm not sure what's going on with some of my settings but there you go so have a really I really enjoy this right here and um, so far this product has been okay the packaging on this it seems sturdy it seems it does have a little stopper that just fell out on the floor you know same thing just dropping stuff everywhere so it does have like a little protector and I'll show it in the Rouge Rebellion one so it does have like a little stopper right here to help protect the product and it's not as big as the actual product, but I guess, I don't know if they, she made it that way for ease and convenience as far as getting it out and you're not having to fight. All right, so hopefully the focus is better now. So once again, we have the Galactic Gold right here. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to do a swatch, put my finger in here. Like my finger can't fit, but my nail makes it a little hard. This is what it looks like right here. This is you know prior to me putting my arm my eye rather and so you can see it's a really nice bronze creamy gold really impactful and you know I get tired of golds from Pat but what made me buy this one I was like this is my type of gold so I did really enjoy wearing it the other day so real quick I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on this eye right here and like I said I'm gonna use my refer zero two brush so I literally just, you know, did it like this and it worked out really well. And that day I just went ahead and put the mats on of my choice. So you do get a tiny bit of fallout so I wouldn't still grab too much. Well, here we go. So it looks pretty. And then you could definitely go over it with your finger to get more intensity or just kind of build it up and layer. And a lot of times that's what I end up doing. I just build it up because otherwise, or go in with my finger after I lay with my brush, or the opposite way around. Lots of shine, lots of glisten. Really, this could be a nice one and done shade, honestly. Both of these shades. And then I'm just using my finger to build it up to make it definitely more impactful.
so there we go and then in a second I'll turn down the exposure so you can see so that is the galactic gold shade and I guess I need to get my stopper down at the bottom on the floor and wash it off so we got galactic gold and now I'm gonna jump in with Rouge Rebellion. This one I have not worn yet. So from my experience of just wearing it, I had really great longevity, did not have an issue with it. Wore it Christmas Day, probably wore it for a good six to eight hours, I would say, which is not bad at all. So I didn't have any problem. This is Rouge Rebellion. I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch it. It's a really pretty shade. And I like these shades for like one and done. Also, I'm just going to pop it right here next to the Galactic Gold. So, swatch of both of the shades right there. This gold, it definitely has a little hint of red in there that I'm catching. That's why I like it. It's a nice gold, but it's nice bronzy gold. It's more bronze, more melony. It kind of reminds me of this pigment from MAC called Melon. So, if you have that... Well, I'll pull that out and then of course if you got oh my gosh it's like 50 billion golds from Pat McGrath so who can even tell you so this is the Roots Rebellion and this one is going on just as easy as the gold I think I'm just kind of taking my time to prevent some of the fallout So obviously there's certain shades that come to mind when the shade is placed on my eyes like um, see I do have an idol by her and of course you know we're thinking about um, Blitz Blitz Flame from Mothership 5 so here are both of the shades feels really great no problem applying them this one I don't feel like I really needed to go over it with my finger but I'll do it just so we can see with the extra, it does add that extra amp up, yeah. Of the shade right there, so. Those are the both of the shades. All right, and I just cut down the exposure a couple notches just so you can get a better view of the shade. So, so we have the Galactic Gold, and then we have the Rouge Rebellion. I pulled out a few comparisons. We're not gonna take too long because honestly, you know, with Pat McGrath, we can be here forever. So as far as the Rouge Rebellion shade, one of the shades that comes to mind is this idol and it's called Crimson Fire. And this shade I've worn several times as a one and done. I think this shade came out actually in 2019. Yeah, 2019, it was actually an original shade you know, as far as an idol, because a lot of the idols were re-promoted shades. So that's Crimson Fire right there. And you know, Crimson Fire is definitely probably a little bit more on the red side. I definitely feel like I see more pink in the Rouge Rebellion. So yeah, they are different shades, but you know, it's kind of one of those things nobody's gonna know <laughs> when you put them on your eyes, for sure. And then, of course, I have Mothership 5 right here, and this is, what is this called? Oh Lord, you know, this is the packaging for Mothership 5, and this is Bronze Seduction, okay? My box has kind of had it. I got mine from Sephora, my box kind of came a little messed up. So, right here, we have Blitz Flame. Now, this is a very smooth formula, so, here is Blitz Flame. I'm sorry, my dryer was going off during part, going on during part of this video. If you guys haven't seen my video or where I'm making like, you know, making things work, yeah. I had a flood in my place. The pipe broke because of the extreme weather and yeah. Wow, these, <laughs> okay, so Crimson Fire Blitz Flame, they look extremely, so this is still fully more pink to me. But these two are looking like dead on like the same shade. Wow, okay. Very interesting there. And then for the gold shade, I'm gonna probably swatch the gold right back down here so we can see it a little bit easier. I have one more swatch of Galactic Gold. So that's Galactic Gold. Then I brought out an oldie, but a goodie. This is the MAC Pigment. 
in the shade Melon. You can see it's old, it's a big jar of pigment. Thing about the MAC pigments, you know, they are actually loose powders, okay? So yeah, be careful. So immediately I thought about Melon and Melon was my jam in high school for sure. I would wear it basically almost like this because you know, we didn't do transition shades. In, in the late 90s, early 2000s. I graduated from high school in 2002. So, you know, the makeup aesthetic wasn't, you know, as structured as it is now. So that is Melon. So as you can see, let's see. They are, I don't know. Definitely this looks more opaque, but Melon is a loose powder. You would definitely need to put, like usually I would use a mixing medium with this to make it stand out a little bit better. So they're similar. And then I brought out two palettes by Pat McGrath. And these are the six pans. These are some of the original six pans. So we have La Vie and Rose because there is a really pretty gold in there. And you know, Pat McGrath has 50 billion gold. So it's just like, we will be here forever. Like we could literally just have a gold swatch party. Oh, that would be a fun video. I feel like, I know Kinky Sweat did that on live during the pandemic, but you know, one day I might make that happen. So this is called Gold Nectar. So this is definitely pulling more bronze, more orangey. These two are definitely probably closer in nature. And this is the MAC Melon Pigment right here. And now we have, this is the Six Pan Bronze Ambition. And we know this one is full of the more gold shades right here. But I'm going to swatch this particular shade right here, which is called, uh, oh crap. Okay, Gold Rush, I did have it correct. So this is Gold Rush. Did I say that for the other one? I don't. It's too many goals. So there we go. So all three of these really just look the same and I definitely just see more, definitely more bronze orange in this one. I'm trying to think, was there something else? I'm sure there is. Um, that probably just gives more of that effect, more orangey but I'm just gonna leave it here right now with some of the comparisons. I'm back so we can play with Sip Seduction. My eyelids are reprimed using that same MAC primer. So once again, this is a look of the palette right here. And there are no shimmer shades. I mean, there are no matte shades rather, which that does not bother me because it gives decadence vibes, which is Mothership 4. So both of the palettes that I do have doesn't have any matte shades. So this is actually looking really pretty. So I'm excited to play with this formula. One thing I just noticed about the sticker on the back, the sticker is just kind of uh, it's bulky it's white it's giving very generic very plain it could have been kind of just flushed to the packaging like a transparent sticker I would have really appreciated that more um, or it could have just been it just looks so stark it could have been blue I don't know I don't really care for it not to mention the names are inverted so the names on the sticker is are how you read from when you reread in American culture from left to right but the shadows actually go the opposite way so this will be imperial this is dark destiny must our heat galactic conquest force sensitive so i did have to just kind of look that up on my let's see on my ipad just so i could uh figure that out because you know it gets a little complicated okay so yeah it's I don't I don't know why they they do that so definitely it's inverted so the shades are actually going this way but when you read on the sticker you read it from this way a mess so also the palette retail for $36 so that I don't think that was too bad and this is the outer packaging like when this showed up I was just like what what is this what, what is this and I get it and it's the same way with the other packaging but I just think it would have been so much better if it just looked like this. Like it just would have looked so much better. I didn't need this. Like I get that you're just trying to have the whole, it just looks cheap. It doesn't feel good. So I would have much preferred it to look like this. Uh, let's go ahead, let's swatch this little bad boy out real quick before I jump in with an eye look. So let's make sure I don't mess myself up. So first up, 
we have the shade Imperial. So, so far it feels really creamy, really nice. We have Imperial. This does feel like a lighter formula. So that is Imperial. Next up we have Dark Destiny. I'm gonna give another pass at Dark Destiny. I do have lotion on my arms, so I wouldn't be up here like an ashy mess. So it can sometimes affect how the shadow actually goes on the arm. But that is a really pretty shade. It's definitely radiating like navy blue sparkle. And then in the middle we have Mustafar Heat. Ooh, that shade feels amazing. Look at that shine. Oh man, that is freaking gorgeous. Now, I don't remember any shade that we have by Pat McGrath. Now, we do have like Blood Moon 005, but I don't think we have anything that opulent. You know, as far as orange and copper, we do have something in the Celestial, uh, the Mothership Mega, what is it, Celestial Odyssey, that's a nice bright orange, but that right there is gorgeous. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. And then we have Galactic Conquest, which is this green right here. It feels good. So they, these formulas, they do feel different. I know, I think this is like more of the same formulas from the Holiday 5 pans. I didn't pick up the Holiday 5 pans, but that is really pretty too. They feel, they feel smoky. Now this one felt the silkiest and had the more, most slip in it, but they all feel very smooth. You could tell there is some type of little glitter particle or something in there but it's so smooth I don't I don't know so I don't know. and then next up we have force sensitive if I can get my hand out the way so you got force sensitive right there, there we go it's a nice pewter shade so those are the swatches oh man I, I, I can't hate on this formula. This formula is gorgeous. It feels gorgeous. That shade, I gotta get it on my eyes. This is really pretty. So I don't know, cause like in the decadence, those particular metallics, you don't necessarily need a matte. So I will probably pull in a matte, but this right here, absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Hmm, how am I gonna work this palette? It's like I want to use this, but then orange and green. I'll figure it out in a second. Okay. To, to help me out with the eye look, I brought in the Celestial Nirvana palette. This is from the holiday. This is holiday 22. And I'm gonna focus. I'm really just gonna use this shade right here because this is a shade I enjoy for structure, and I might pull in this. But I really don't want to take away from any of the colors that are in this palette of Steph Seduction. And then you know. This is our little color story right here. So figure it out in just a second what I'm gonna do with this.
All right, I am back and here is the look using Sif Seduction. So this palette is actually really nice. The formula I was really impressed with. Really creamy, easy to put on with a brush, easy to blend out. Look at the shine of that green. So I did go ahead and use a little mixing medium when I went ahead and used the uh, blue shade, which was the Dark Destiny, because it was just a tiny, it really wasn't flaky, but I was trying to put it in this little small area. And so it was kind of crumbling. It's, it's more because I was trying to put it in that small area. It's not like a crumbly shade by any means, but it did have a tiny bit more texture to it but really gorgeous. The formula, mm, I had no problems working with this at all. Very smooth. So I'll talk about this a little bit more at the end. Face details, of course, you know, we're coming in with the Pat McGrath foundation and the shade, what is this? Medium Deep 22. I went ahead and used the concealer in Medium Deep 20. I think I threw it up already. Of course, you know, I went in with my bronzer that I always use, which is the Minted Vacay bronzer right here. And for blush, I went ahead and took the Blushing Delights from the Bridgerton collection. I'm like, let me not drop it. And I went ahead and used like the more coral shade right here. And the nip, the lips, the nips, <laughs> the lips are coming in very 90s with this Juvia's Place lip liner in the shade Cola, which is like a direct dupe basically for chestnut lip liner. And then I topped it off with the Flesh Gloss. This is a Fantasy Lust Gloss by Pat McGrath right here. So, yep. That is the face. Oh, and in my waterline, I use my Blitz Blue Liner from Pat McGrath. So I just popped that in the liner waterline area because I thought that would be nice, coupled along with the blue. And then the lashes are Ardell Demi Wispy. So really satisfied with this look. I think it came out beautiful. It's bold, but not too bold, kind of earthy. And I feel like this palette would actually be a great little combination with Mothership 6 which was actually the one that was re-promoted. So, <laughs> great little mashup, I think. It will, it will go well. All right, I'm gonna jump into now, we're gonna, I'm gonna take this off, and I'm gonna jump into Divine Droid, which is right here. And I did go ahead and put my finger in the green shade by accident. Really beautiful color story right here. So, I'll be back in just a moment. Next up, we have Divine Joy. I'm back. My eyelids are reprimed using the same primer, and we're going to jump into the Divine Joy palette. Now, this one is really cute, and the color story is giving, it's really pretty. It's colorful. It's kind of pastel-y. It's really bright and fun, something that, honestly, we really don't get from Pat McGrath uh, when you think about our palettes. Here is the packaging. Now, I do like this packaging better than the Sif Seduction, but I still wish that, you know, just fold it back. I wish it looked like this versus, I don't know, I just don't like this. It feels arts and craft-ish. I don't know, I really don't. So on the back, we once again, we have this sticker. I don't like the sticker. The sticker does have like a little bubble in it. Mm, yeah, I, I just, I don't know what's going on with this, but the packaging is really pretty and yeah. I did stick my finger in the green shade. So I'm gonna assume, just like before, yes, it is because I can figure out this is astral line, that the um, the wording, it goes from left to right on the back, but actually when I'm holding it, it is the inverted ray, it is uh, right to left. So let's go ahead and let's swatch this thing out. I'm gonna start first with astral line right here. So far, it's feeling really smooth just like the previous palette. Which way did I do it? Lord Jesus, did I do it this way? Did I do it that way? I think I did it this way. Ooh, that's pretty. So that shade seems a little bit softer. The consistency seems about the same, but yeah, I'm gonna just do one more pass. It's a pretty shade, yeah. It, you know, we really don't have anything like that shade um, amongst her collection. Next up, we have Bronze Circuit, which is right here. Okay, we got Bronze Circuit, followed by Secret Blueprint. 
and we don't really have a lot of light green light blues either we have one in the nirvana palette that four pan oh that's pretty yeah i'm definitely getting spring vibes with this and then we have optic fuchsia here we go with optic fuchsia it's really pretty as well Last up, we have this purple shade, which is called Ultraviolet Messenger. Ooh, that is, ooh, wow. That's gorgeous, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it closer, create another eye look with this particular palette. And I am just gonna pop in once again with the Nirvana palette and just pull in that uh, one bronze taupey shade that I used before. <laughs> So that way I get, my looks can have just a tiny bit of structure. All right, I'm back and here is the look with, what is this, Divine Joy? Yes. So I really like this little palette. I feel that the formula was pretty much comparable to the Sif Seduction palette, but this palette seemed maybe just a little bit more creamier as far as the shades, but the formula was really nice in this particular uh, palette as well. Um, for the makeup details, they're all the same. I did from my under uh, my waterline because Pat has yet to give us uh, blitz crayon in purple. I don't, you could have released that with this collection. You could have done that a couple of times with all these collections. But I went in with my liner called Charite. This is from uh, Danessa Myrick. So I'm just going to do a little swatch right here. And this is one of her multi chrome liners. This is something I just really enjoy. And then uh, for the lip, I changed it out because the other one was a little too brown for what we got going on here. So I went in with Pale Fire Nectar which was actually something that was released again. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> like you don't need to buy all this stuff, it's crazy. So let's go ahead and jump into the palettes. What do I think? So the palettes, I actually really enjoy the palettes. I think the palettes have a beautiful formula, beautiful color story. I'm gonna talk about this particular palette first. Um, I feel like the shades are really pretty. They're really kind of ethereal, a lot lighter than what we're really used to from Pat McGrath. Uh, the formula did seem nice. Now this particular shade, I did notice I kind of had to take my finger just to amp it up to get it a little bit deeper. I didn't have a problem using my brush with this. I used the same brush wherever I stuck it, which is my Sonya G Builder Pro. And I use the same brush. I'm really over here looking for the brush, like, hmm. oh, here it is. Okay, it was just behind the other brush. So this is the brush that I use for all of it. And I just went ahead with my finger and just like made it a little bit deeper. So you don't have to really be scared about the shade because it doesn't pull that deep. Um, I thought that this shade was a little bit lighter and ethereal. Same with the blue. So you get the green, but it's not like very overpowering. But the formula is really nice. I like the uh, little packaging sticker. This sticker doesn't really bother me as much, but this sticker, it does bother me. I definitely feel like on both of the palettes, it should have been like some type of trans translucent sticker because... 
or transparent rather because it's not face powder <laughs> but because <laughs> it just takes away from it and makes it cheap now usually she does kind of wrap the packaging in some type of outer foam so that doesn't really bother me I do notice that we have you know the hard lacquer back so I do like that but I don't know I wonder what it would take to make like a little palette like this out of the whole lacquer like you know like this like the mother shits but just truncated down so overall I feel like the palettes are actually really solid now I did pull out one palette that for comparison for the uh, divine joy because I was like this palette really does remind me of, of the Nirvana um, what is this nocturnal nirvana this was a lux quad that came out in 2019 this is the first time i have quads so as you can see we have a light blue we got a green and what's there now this is not a lime green like this one is and then we have a purple this purple shade however it's a blitz purple that purple shade is it's hard to work with it's pretty dry so that was to hold both of the palettes up together this is what it looks like you know so as you can see they are very similar. So if you're interested in this and you have this and you can work with the purple, I can work with this purple. It's not the best purple. You could definitely save yourself some money here because they are looking very, very similar. You know, um, definitely this green in here is really beautiful. And so is this blue. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um, but other than that, the price point is not bad. I mean, it's just like, I don't want to just tear apart this collection, but if I was to get to recommend any two things, definitely this. And let's talk about, um, the, what is it? The Chroma Lux. <laughs> let's get the pigments real quick. So back again with the pigments, the pigments I actually do enjoy. They're not bad at all. And I think for me, one of the favorite shades is the intro, uh, Extra Galactic Gold. I did like the red shade and I haven't worn it yet, but I do feel like, I don't know. I'm just going to make a concerted effort to wear these because, you know, sometimes with these single eyeshadows, I just throw them in the drawer and they don't work. So I have worn this already. The longevity was really great. It had nice shine. It looked really pretty. Put it on with any type of brown or anything that you have because, you know, Pat McGrath, you already have enough browns. But, you know, if honestly these two products you know i was interested in them because they're creams and we haven't had a formula like this but honestly like i said if i was to get anything from the collection if you were interested it would just really be the three pans because like i said these two shades as you saw when i swatched them it's so many different variations of these colors and these colors the two colors that i chose out of the four that were given there's nothing really you know different about them um with that being said, I, it's not a terrible collection. It just feels off. It doesn't feel right. Something is missing. And I think we just have too much behind the scenes information versus like if it was just given to us. Of course, with the Mothership uh, 6 being re repackaged and it's not even a good repackage versus how it was with, you know, Mothership 4 when it was done. And Mothership 4 was actually just gone. You could not purchase it. And the fact that people were like purchasing this palette for $70, $80 and then now you want me to pay $120 and now you want to give me this extra special packaging. Not that the packaging was dope, but the problem is like that was a sticker. Like it could have just been like how Mothership 4 was done when Star Wars palette came out originally. So I don't know. I would just pick up a couple of things if you're interested in it. Like I said, the quality of these palettes though, I can attest to and say that they are wonderful and I do really recommend these palettes and I will be using them. But like I said, now that I look at it, the Divine Droid, if you have the Nocturnal, Nocturnal Nirvana, it, it's not really with, worth it, you know? So I probably the only one that's really different out of her collection is just this. So, and I think this will work well with like some type of palette mashup, but then lo and behold, it's probably something <laughs> that I don't have in my collection that I'm missing that might be kind of similar to this. I know we have a green like this in Mothership 6, and then we have like Blood Moon 005 that is in Mothership 6. This shade is totally different. And then of course we always have some bronze and some pewter shades. And she does that a lot. And that just kind of grinds my gears too. I'm like, we don't need these two champagne shades at all. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed the demos or the products. Leave me a uh, message down below in the comments. Hit the notification bell so you know when I come out with another video, which will be soon. And subscribe to my channel because, you know, I would love to have you here in my little makeup family. And with all of that being said, you already know what time it is. It's time for the chat dance. Chat dance. Hey, 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 chat dance. Mm, mm, chat dance. Hey, mm, mm, chat. All right, y'all. Bye.